Welcome to Small Practice Support Information Session 23. In this Law Society of Ireland recording, Claude O'Brien talks to Justin Purcell about marketing plans and growth strategies. All very welcome to Small Practice Information Session 23, and I'm here with Clodagh O'Brien from Crow. We're going to talk about marketing plans and growth strategies. So Clodagh is a partner at Crow Advisory Consulting Department, and she joined Crow in 2015 from New Market Consulting as a strategy and marketing consultancy where she was managing director. And Clodagh was the, the project lead on the Crow Market Study uh, for Sold Practitioners and Small Legal Practices in Ireland. And she's also currently working with the Law Society and Small Practice Supports and the Implementation Group. So I think we're really with somebody who's a really inside knowledge of some of the, the key uh, uh, challenges facing uh, small practices at the moment. So, so I'm delighted to have you on the, uh, along today, uh, Claudia. So if anybody wants to ask questions, we're taking questions uh, alongside the chat. So over to you, Claudia, and, uh, and tell, us, tell us all about how we would develop a marketing plan and a growth strategy. Sure. Um, and thank you for that introduction, Justin. Um, I presume you can see the slides there. Yeah. yeah. Yep. You and could, if you wanted to, put them into uh, slide, the slideshow, if that suited sure. you, or does that affect? Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, um, I think everybody can hear us. If anyone's having a problem uh, hearing us, maybe you could just send us through on the chat. But yeah, I think we're good to go, Claude. Thank you. Okay, great. So, um, as Justin said, the, the purpose of um, the next half an hour or so is to talk about growth strategies and marketing plans. And um, lovely to be described as, a, as an insider, um, but certainly the, the origin of the um, workbooks that are available to members of the Law Society in relation to growth strategies and marketing plans come from the Crow Market Study, which we carried out where, actually going back to, to the point I was making earlier about consultation processes, there was an extensive consultation process all around the country um, where we met various uh, sole practitioners and small firms um, throughout the country. And that was back at the time when it was possible to have physical meetings. So we, we took off on our consultation bus and traveled around the country. Um, and the recommendations in the market study come from the interaction that we had and the consultation that we had with sole practitioners and small firms where what they were talking about is what is it that they need in their view to develop a more sustainable practice. And four of the recommendations that came out of the market study were around diversifying business development practices, whereby what smaller practices said to us was that they acknowledged that they needed to diversify their business development activities, that they had been and continued to be very reliant on word of mouth and on referral of business. And uh, I think smaller practices and sole practitioners themselves were very aware of the need to move beyond that while it had worked in the past it wasn't always going to work into the future especially in an increasingly competitive environment so um, one of the recommendations was to diversify business development activities and not rely so much on the existing client base to produce more business um, and on referrals as well um, and I suppose on the back of that there was another recommendation which was about the need for sole practitioners and smaller firms to develop growth strategies and to ensure that the actions that they needed to carry out in relation to growing their businesses were planned and implemented so that they could uh, you know ensure that they were uh, making their future more sustainable and obviously a key part of a, any growth strategy is a marketing plan and a key part of business development is a marketing plan so the third recommendation in the um, market study was that, that firms should increase their overall marketing efforts and capabilities. I mean, again, the people that we met and the research that we did um, acknowledged the fact that there, there wasn't a huge amount of marketing activity that was happening um, and that there was you know, an acknowledged need to increase marketing activity um, and to formally plan for client communications and make sure, for example, that client surveys would be carried out so that uh, solicitors understood the needs of 
their clients and that they would develop a marketing plan based on understanding client needs and responding to those needs in various ways, which we will go into later on, you know, whether it's um, about sort of traditional client communication or using new communications tools and activities um, and, you know, increasing social media presence, for example, or websites. And I know some of these things are um, areas that have been either covered already in other talks on marketing or that will be um, covered in the future. Sure. So if I just... Uh, but move... I think this, this time of the year is now a great time to start planning for, for 2021. So yeah. that's kind of yeah, one of the that's... reasons why, why we're revisiting it again so. that's a very good point justin i think because um you know now is the time because it takes a while to develop the plan and also it takes a while to implement the plan and to see results from the plan so you're absolutely right the time is now um to to start to plan and document um so uh this is just going back to the point about uh the supports that are available to members of the Law Society through the Small Practice Hub and uh, the Growth Strategy Workbook and the Marketing Workbook are available um, on the Hub for people and they basically, um, I'll, I'll briefly talk through the content of, of both of the workbooks, um, but they are uh, designed to be a support and to assist people and speed up the process in terms of developing a growth strategy and developing a marketing plan. So the Growth Strategy Workbook, and um, there are seven different sections in the workbook, and really um, the process starts with understanding your practice's performance and say, looking at how is your practice performing currently, and there's quite a lot of data gathering involved in um, the first section, so it's looking at, you know, by service line by client type um, by rev you know percentages of revenue it's all of the data that is is probably there in your practice but you may not have put it together in a way that will assist you to understand your current practice performance so that you understand where you're starting from and then later on in the growth strategy you set goals for where you want to reach in terms of the, the different areas of your business um, the second section of the Growth Strategy Workbook is looking at your the profile of your clients. So, what type of clients do you have? What sort of uh, what number of uh, projects do you work on with them? Where do they? Um, you know, where does that business come from? Do they refer other business into you? What sort of sectors are they in? Or if they're private individuals, what sort of needs do they have in terms of their legal requirements? And um, so you know, again, it's about kind of analyzing, taking the information that you have and collating it and analyzing it to, to ensure that you have insights in relation to, to your clients and who they are and what they need and what you can do for them and how you communicate a message out to them in your marketing plan about what it is that you can do for them. And uh, in terms of the market analysis, then it's about looking at what are the key factors in the marketplace in which you are operating. So that's really about the, the legal sector overall, but also the different sectors that your clients might operate in. So whether it's environmental, whether it is you know, the um, collaborative economy, whether it's agri-business, you know, where, wherever your sectors are, it's important to understand the trends in those sectors so that you can spot potential opportunities for business growth and business development. Um, and then the, I suppose the, the sort of the fourth part of the analysis element of the growth strategy is to look at how do your competitors behave and what is it that you can learn from them what is it that you can emulate what is it that you can avoid by looking at how they have um, behaved and how they have perhaps grown their business um, or how they've met the challenges that they have come up against um, and then section five is really the SWOT which I'm sure you're, you're probably all aware of the, the internal strengths and weaknesses and the external opportunities and threats that you need to sort of consider in terms of how do you harness the, the strengths and avail of the opportunities that are there and how do you address the weaknesses and address the threats that are out in the marketplace um, considering from the, the point of view of growing your business and what, what's your best response. Um, the final two sections then are really about defining what are the growth objectives that you have 
for your practice? What ambition do you have in terms of level of growth? And that really goes back to section one and understanding where you're coming from. What's the, the baseline? What's your starting point in terms of practice performance now? And what is your ambition in terms of how you want to grow the various different areas of the practice over the coming years? And the final section of the growth strategy workbook then is the action plan. And there's a template in there. And I should have said there's a template. There are templates throughout the workbook that provide prompts. So, you know, you don't have to come up with all the, the inspiration yourself. Um, there are prompts that are there that, that will be relevant um, and that are there for, I suppose, um, for amendment or for deletion or for um you know it's to individualize it for your your own practice uh, and i suppose then just in terms of considering what are the benefits of a growth strategy um and for some reason the slide isn't moving on there we go um so the benefits of the growth strategy workbook are that they will help you to identify current and emerging business trends uh, to create competitor profiles and identify what is it about your business that gives you a competitive advantage? What is it about your practice that makes you stand out from the competition um, and will give you an edge when it comes to growing and developing your business? And it also makes you understand and helps you to understand the potential risks that are out there in terms of business development and in terms of sustainability and to define and implement control measures to manage or mitigate um, the risks that you might face. So I suppose the, the workbook culminates in a plan that will outline in a very logical kind of step by step from current to future, uh, the growth path for your practice and the actions that you need to put in place, the resources that you might need to invest and the strategy and objectives that are required to get you to that uh, place of growth that you will have defined in your, in your plan. Um, and also I think it's, it's a very useful tool to help practices to move from operationally led thinking day to day thinking to think to the future and think beyond what you're experiencing today and to envision what it is that your practice might become um, and it's also a useful tool in terms of managing productivity because part of what the workbook um, and the process that you will work through developing your growth strategy does part of what it does is it makes you think about work practices and systems and you know what it, how can you streamline the various systems that you have in place or formalize things make things more efficient um, and it does that in a planned way rather than just you know um, productivity or growth evolving in an unplanned way which might result in the development actually of inefficiencies or you know it might be you might grow in an area that you're not particularly interested in or that there isn't you know potential in future years so it makes you consider all of these things and i think also where where there where staff are involved in um the firm that it is they should be involved in the development of the um the growth strategy as well and it uh, increases staff involvement and staff motivation um, in relation to uh, you know being involved and and feeling a part of the the future destiny of the of the practice so in terms then of moving on to the the marketing strategy um, and the marketing plan so as I said the growth strategy is very much linked to the marketing plan so at the end of the growth strategy you have your action plan that maps out what is required and part of that is a marketing plan that will again is a formal document that uh, will capture all of the things that you need to do and plan to do to um, implement a successful marketing campaign that will lead to business growth and business development. And again, just to look at the sections of the marketing plan. So it starts with a questionnaire. Um, and I suppose, I suppose, Justin, sometimes what we would find is that, um, you know, 
particularly professional services, people often feel that, you know, marketing is an area they don't have experience of or that they're not hugely familiar with or they're certainly not well practiced. Um, and, you know, what we would normally say to people and what normally turns out to be true is that you're actually doing a lot of marketing without realizing it. You know, you're informally, you might be carrying out a lot of marketing activities, but you're either not realizing that or you're not giving yourself full credit for it. So often we find when when people fill out, and that's the purpose really, I suppose, of the of the preparatory marketing questionnaire is to figure out where are you starting from in terms of your marketing. And generally speaking, people are pleasantly surprised that they are actually doing quite a bit already. Um, and that's always, a, you know, sort of an encouraging starting point um, in relation to to the marketing plan. And the the preparatory analysis um, some of that will come from the work that you've already done as well in the growth strategy. So understanding your client profile, understanding your um, competitor's profiles. A lot of that work will already have been done in the growth strategy. So it's not like you have to turn around and do all that again. You use the information that you've already prepared. Um, but what the preparatory analysis does is it will look at you know the trends in the marketplace. But from uh, in the marketing plan, it will look at do you think these plans, the, sorry, these trends will continue over the next number of years and are those trends positive or negative? So you could use, you know, COVID as an example for that. So if you believe that this trend is going to continue, how is it that your your um, practice needs to develop in relation to that? And equally, how do you think your client, clients will um, adapt and respond to that and are there opportunities that might arise for you in business terms in relation to working with clients in a different context um, and you know again it will be looking the the preparatory analysis you'd be looking at sources of business revenue you'd be looking at your current market segments your competitor analysis and your SWOT analysis and a lot of that will come from as I said uh, the work that you've already done in your um, in your growth strategy but Again, just to give an example of how it's slightly different. So what we do in the SWOT analysis and um, in the work in the marketing workbook is we look at each of the strengths that you will take from your growth strategy. And you're, you're asked to think about, are these strengths necessary for the future growth of the practice? Uh, do those strengths give you a competitive advantage or not? And um, could you be exploiting those strengths more than you are currently in the context of um, developing your, your practice and your business development activities? And then, for example, we, we go on to, in the workbook, um, you'll go on to work through a section on um, the preparatory analysis for your, um, for your marketing plan. And that's, I suppose, broken into to three different phases. One is looking at what's the, the current situation that you're looking at. So what are the, the market trends and the client trends that you need to be considering? What are your strengths as a firm? But what are the challenges that you are facing as a firm? Um, and how have your competition maybe, how are they similar or different in terms of the kinds of strengths and challenges that you're facing? And then finally, all of that sort of analysis should lead you relatively easily to defining what your unique selling point is. What is it that's different about your practice in comparison to others? And that will be a sort of, I suppose, a core element of your marketing and the messages that you want to get out to your your current clients and also your your potential clients because at the end of the day a lot of the growth is going to some of the growth will come from existing clients but a lot of your growth is going to come from new clients and new sectors as well so um it's very important to be able to clearly define what your unique selling point is um and then the marketing plan will bring you into um marketing objectives which i'll go through in a bit more detail on the next slide um, but there again there are prompts throughout all of these sections there are prompts and questions that you need to ask yourself that that will you know facilitate you answering the, these questions that, that that are within the workbook um, and then again the um plan sorry the workbook culminates in an action plan which uh is relevant to each of your 
marketing objectives and it will detail the specific actions that uh, you need to carry out and you know how the different actions are going to be carried out when and by whom and it will also look at is you know is there a cost for the various different objectives and that could be a marketing budget so it could be a financial cost it could be investment in um some new uh you know uh systems or, or strategies or it could be human resource cost as well and um, because this will take time there's no question about it um and you know it it will mean that people will have to invest time not only in developing the plan but even more so in implementing the plan subsequently so uh, I said I'd go back and just have a look at the um, marketing objectives section of the workbook and just to, to give you some idea of um, the, the kind of the way that the workbook is, is structured. Uh, what it does is it takes you through a series of questions. So when you get to the marketing objectives section, what we are asking people to look at is what are the overall goals that you want to achieve from your marketing plan. And those should link back to your growth strategy. So you might have an objective in your growth strategy that you want to grow business in a particular sector, that you want to grow business in a particular service line, that you want to introduce new service lines that you maybe haven't um, offered previously to your clients. Um, so th the marketing objective the, the plan will look at, link back to your growth strategy and say from a marketing perspective, what is it that you need to do to achieve those strategies? What is it that you need to do from a marketing perspective to introduce a new service line, um, et cetera? And there are seven elements um, in relation to service marketing. So when you're marketing a professional service, there are seven different elements that you need to think about. Um, you may or may not have an, um, have an objective related to each of them, but you at least need to consider whether you have a marketing objective in each. So the first one is, do you have an objective around service? And as I said, that could be around service lines, developing new service lines or deepening your specialisms in a particular area, et cetera. Um, price in this context would obviously be looking at um, fee but we need to keep it neat and use the seven words beginning with P. Um, place then is about your, your location. So, um, you know, at the moment that, that has changed to, as we were saying at the start, just in remote locations. Um, but previously this obviously would have related to, um, you know, your office and where is it that your, your office is and, what, you know, how prominent is, how visible is your location, et cetera, et cetera. How useful is it for clients? Um, then you need to look at promotion, and that's everything from branding, advertising, your sales activity, any publicity that you generate, direct marketing, which would cover mail shots or email marketing or e-zines, and then social media, whether that's blogs or any of the social media sites and your activity on any of the the um, general social media sites or business related sites like LinkedIn, for example. Um, people then, in terms of your marketing objectives, you're looking at the team of people that you work with and you know, are you adequately uh, marketing their skills, their, their depth of knowledge, their expertise? Um, and is there some, do you have a marketing objective around doing that more or doing that in a different way? Uh, looking at your processes, you might have a marketing process um, objective, and that's around, um, you know, looking at service standards and, you know, levels of customer service, levels of customer interaction. You know, are you communicating with your clients sufficiently? Do you understand their needs, et cetera? Um, and then the, the final of the seven P's for service marketing is the physical evidence. So that is, the again, it kind of relates back to, um, generally in professional services to your office and the, the look and feel and the experience that people have, you know, when they, when they meet you in person or when they meet you in your, in your location. So just to, to I suppose, uh, close up, because I know we want to perhaps take some questions as well, Justin. Yeah, we're just coming up to, to 25 past, and I know people, so you have about five more minutes. Uh, yep. So, uh, yeah. Perfect. 
that's fine. Um, so just to, to finish up in terms of, um, you know, we've, we've just talked through the, the marketing objectives and the process that you will go through and the prompts that are in the, the workbook. Um, so the workbook also contains tips for completing your action plan and a series of questions that you should ask yourself when you're completing your action plan. Um, and there's, you know, there's text and, and useful information in the workbook that will help you at each stage. But just in terms of very quickly um, looking at the, the tips, it's about, um, you know, breaking down. So there, so there's a question just, sorry, just before you go off uh, yeah, sure. on, on the actual workbook, does it result in you having sort of a, a marketing plan at the end of it? Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, it, yeah. So it's it, the, the very end piece of the, the workbook is your action plan, but the, and the previous pieces um, will bring you to the stage where you have your marketing plan. So if we go back to this slide here, um, what I've been talking through is everything that brings us up to the objectives, but it ends with an action plan. So yeah. all of those previous sections populate the action plan basically um, and help you. So, I mean, obviously you need to do the work to get there, um, but yeah, it does. That, that is the whole purpose of the workbook is that at the end of it, you do have an actual marketing plan that you then- And then there's a question around a sample um, action plan then from an anonymized version. So that's something that we will look into and, and come up with actually a, a written one that somebody could use as a sample plan. Yeah, I mean, I think there are, there are, as you go through each of the sections, um, there are sort of um, samples of this is what your SWOT might look like. This is what, these are some of the kinds of marketing objectives that you might have. Um, there isn't a, a sample, a complete uh, sample action plan because, you know, that's just too, uh, and, and it is a good question and it is something that we did consider at the time, but that is so specific to an individual practice that, you know, we felt it was better just to include samples as we went through the different sections sure. rather than a sample action plan. Um, but yeah, there's definitely a lot in there, a lot of material in there that will help you to, to um, that provide samples. Um, and uh, just, a, just a question there, mm -hmm. would, these suit, would these workbooks be suitable for a startup? And there's a question is where, where do we get the workbooks? They're all available on the, the small practice hub. Yes. Under uh, start uh, growing your, your practice. So uh, we'll, we'll yep. make the slides available with the recording that we're going to send out. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, the last slide or two here have some of the, the links. So I think those will be available to people afterwards. Um, but um, and, and to we're go doing back a little here. bit of work on those workbooks to allow them to be uh, PDF fillable. So we're hoping to have them available within the next uh, couple of weeks so Brilliant. That, uh, people can use them uh, as opposed to having to write into them. So excellent. Uh, yeah, I think are they are they useful for startups? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, and I think it's worth ha discussing that point a little bit about how they're useful for everybody. Like now's sure. the time to start planning to review where, 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 where you are at in the, in the year. Use the growth strategy workbook to sort of establish where you currently are at and where you would mm -hmm. like to get to. And then use the marketing workbook as a stra as, uh, as a directional tool to add yeah. to action. Yeah, exactly. And I think um, I agree with everything you've just said, Justin. I think the the main difference um, with the a startup for the workbook is that you won't have the same level of or perhaps no um, benchmark data. So you know you're starting from scratch. So it's not like you'd be saying my current performance is you know last year my performance was. Um, you know, this this was the percentage of revenue from these various different sectors. These were the how it broke down over service lines, you know, etc. So you'll be, I think it, it's more starting from what's your ambition rather than saying, how does my ambition compare to a baseline of data? Um, and I mean, one of the things that we did do um, with the, in, in the, uh, we did consider that and we considered, you know, sole practitioners as well, because obviously a sole practitioner isn't going to have anybody to work with them on the development of the workbook. So while um, some of the, the other smaller firms, you know, you might divide it, you might divide sections out and different people might fill out different sections for a sole practitioner, you're going to have to, to fill out the whole thing, you know, yourself from start to finish. But um, we did some work with, some um, willing uh, 
um, volunteers that, that fill it out for us. And actually the sole practitioners and the a startup was one of those as well. And they found it very useful just in terms of kind of, I suppose, getting their thinking, being very focused from the outset um, on growth objectives and how they would market themselves. You know, so absolutely it is, it's, it's valid and useful for um, startups, for sole practitioners and for uh, smaller and larger firms as well. So it, it is universally um, sort of applicable and useful. Listen, Claude, unfortunately, I think we're, we're, we're just running out of time. Yep, so unless there's fine. any other further questions from people, I mean, people are anxious to, to keep the conversation going. I think it, it, it's a subject matter that we, we should return to again uh, very shortly because I think there's a lot more that, that is there for and if people are interested in hearing more about the strategy of what needs to be done in sure. developing a sort of a growth plan and a, a, and a workbook. If you wouldn't mind just fl uh, flicking up our future our, our session yep. for next week, which sure. is... Um, with Aidan Leonard and Ashleen, uh, they're going to be talking about special funds managers. So this is returning again to this uh, public indemnity insurance uh, uh, issue that's coming up at the end of uh, end of uh, November for people to reapply for. And then uh, the following week, we're going to be talking to James Kiernan on the benefits of the local chambers of commerce. And then the following week, we're going to be talking with David Rowe, which is December the 2nd, on buying and selling a small legal practice. So, Claude, thanks a million. I, I wish we had more time to, to keep talking. Um, no problem. Thanks for your time. I know you put a lot of effort into those slides again. It's really great to hear from you the very the specifics around the growth uh, workbook and the marketing workbook because it kind of brings them alive. And I think we'll be going back to it again uh, very, very very soon if if you're if you're willing. So great. Thanks again. That sounds great, Justin. Thank you for the invite and thanks to everybody for the the questions. Yeah. So thanks everyone. Uh, have a good week and slon.